Hey there, friends. My name is Desiree, AKA Mama Friendly, and I'm trying something a little different this year when it comes to our homeschooling. All of the main information is gonna be found in the very first video of this series, which I'll link up here in case you've missed it. But the Cliff's Notes version is that I've been homeschooling my son his entire life. He's nine years old and on the autism spectrum, he has nonverbal autism along with a few other medical diagnoses. My son also has a complete and absolute undying love for all things Disney, much like his mama. So this year I thought it would be fun to give our unit studies a little bit of a Disney twist. So every two weeks this year we're going to start a new unit study based on a Disney ride, movie, character, etc. We're going to be doing our academic work around that theme, but also at least one cooking activity and at least one art activity. So in these videos, I wanna show you guys some of the things that we do to fit the theme. And I have a Pinterest board pertaining to each of the themes. And so along with every single one of these videos, there's going to be a link in the description box to that particular theme's Pinterest board. So make sure that you check those out because I am only showing you some of the things that we're getting into every week, but the board is going to have more activities and also activities for kids of different ages and different abilities. So with all that being said, Let's get into our theme. I am so excited to show you all all of the Finding Nemo slash Finding Dory attractions all over the world because I knew about the ones in Disney World and I knew that there was one in Disneyland though I wasn't quite sure what that was but upon searching on YouTube there are so many places where you can find Finding Nemo attractions across all of the Disney universe. So this very first ride I'm showing you is called Crush's Coaster and it's in Disneyland Paris. What I've been doing lately is that I've been taking all of these videos I find on YouTube and making them into their own playlist that I link in the description box of this video so that if you want, you can go to that playlist after you're done with this video and you can see all of these ride-throughs and attractions in their entirety. But this is super cool. It's like a dark ride and roller coaster kind of mashed together. And I didn't even know that this existed until right now. What's funny is that I just realized that my fish tank is being very loud in the background, so you're probably hearing a lot of aquatic noises. This is the Seas with Nemo and Friends, and this is the dark ride that you'd find at Epcot in Disney World in Orlando. So this is the Nemo ride that I'm most familiar with, and this is in the Seas Pavilion at Epcot. So when you exit this ride, you get to look at all of the aquariums that they have in the building and the ride is actually built into the aquariums so at the end you're actually underwater and you're seeing all the fish that you're swimming with basically that you get to experience afterwards see all of this is real life fishies that you were just riding through in your vehicle pretty cool huh and speaking of the Seas Pavilion at Epcot, this is Turtle Talk with Crush. So this is not so much a ride as it is an attraction. I don't know what the protocol is right now considering COVID because this is sort of like a small theater type environment, but it's a lot like the Monsters Inc. Laugh Floor, which we did do a Monsters Inc. themed uh, Disney homeschool video already. I'll post that up in the corner in case you wanna check that out. The way that this works is that Crush actually talks to the audience and makes jokes and answers questions. So it is sort of an interactive theater experience. And apparently you can find a very similar, like extremely similar attraction on board the Disney Fantasy, which is one of Disney's cruise ships. 
This is Nemo and Friends Sea Rider at Tokyo Disney Sea. And this is another one that I legit had no idea existed. So there seems to be some sort of a theater element to it. But is it a ride as well? Actually, no, it appears to just be like some sort of a show. I can't tell if they're moving. Oh, oh, okay. So it almost kind of seems like maybe like Star Tours where you're not moving outside of this theater situation, but the theater itself seems to be moving and reacting to what's on the screen. That's really cool. If you've ever been on this um, Nemo and Friends Sea Rider at Tokyo Disney Sea, I'd love to know if you could explain to me exactly what the mechanics are like. But um, yeah, it almost has, like I said, a Star Tours feel or even um, Smuggler's Run. Is that what it's called? The other Star Wars ride? So the last ride I want to show you today is Finding Nemo Submarine Voyage. And this is the Disneyland version of a Finding Nemo attraction. And as far as I can tell, it's basically a repurposed, like, version of the 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea ride, which is an old ride we used to have at Disney World. It was actually one of my favorites as a kid. The whole Little Mermaid area has replaced that ride now. And there's a few Easter eggs in the Little Mermaid queue that kind of gives you hints to that. But it's an underwater attraction. You're in a submarine and there's animatronics and as you can see bubble effects and whatnot. It's a super cool concept. I've never been to Disneyland so I've never experienced this Finding Nemo version but as you can see there's also some sorts of like screen elements as well. And then see so it's like screen but also animatronics. It's a super cool concept for a ride. And the very last Finding Nemo attraction, and yes, this is an attraction as far as I'm concerned, that I wanna show you all today, is the Finding Nemo pool at Art of Animation Resort at Disney World in Orlando. This pool is our favorite pool in all of Disney World. And one of the coolest things about it is that it plays music underwater. So if you're swimming underwater, they actually have speakers blasting so you can hear music while you swim. There's also a really cool themed splash pad. And the reason that they have this at Art of Animation is because they have an entire section of rooms that are all Finding Nemo themed. It's a really cool place to go, very immersive. There's the speakers right there. Very immersive environment. This is our favorite place to stay, specifically so we can have access to this pool. We're gonna throw some fish into the water. The water beads. Whoa! <laughs> Here, let's get all the, we need blue fish so we can find them easily. There's seven here, but let's also put orange fish because Nemo's orange. Da -na 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 -na. Let's find some fish. <gasps> Whoa, that's one, two. <laughs> There's 14, okay? Three, good catching fish. Four, you're finding them. Five, you're finding Nemo. Six, seven. Thirteen, there's one more. Do you see one more? Nice work! I'm so excited for this week's food activity. It's gonna be super simple and definitely much more of a treat than a recipe, but Dang, you only live once. You should be allowed to treat every once in a while. We actually have the movie playing in the background right now. But we've got some blue jello, some grapes, some clear cocktail glasses. We have fish sprinkles. Look how cute. They are fish. 
and we have whoa they're talking whale back there we've got some whipped cream so we're going to make an ocean with jellyfish in it Puppy, look, can you come help me? We're gonna mix our jello into our water. Here we go, here we go, here we go. So the idea here is that we're gonna just pour a little bit of jello into each see-through cup. We're gonna put it in the fridge until it firms up a little bit, just enough to hold the grapes. The grapes we're gonna cut in half. My son actually helped me with this part. Cut them in half and try to put them kind of dome side up so they look like jellyfish. You set those on top of the slightly firm jello, put them back in the fridge for a little while to finish firming up, and then you add another little bit of jello and repeat, so on and so on. And the idea is that at the end, you have all of these layers of different jellyfish in your ocean cup of jello. Now, I don't know if it's because I was in a rush, I was really excited, so I used the quote unquote speed set method, which uses ice. Our jello never really set up. So <laughs> we tried our best here, um, but we never really got past like layer two. And even then, the jellyfish weren't exactly right side up, but it was still really yummy. It was still really pretty, just not exactly what we expected. So if there's one thing I would recommend here is take your time, don't rush it. It'll be worth it at the end, I hope, <laughs> if you just follow the regular traditional method of making the jello and just bit by bit add your grapes as it sets up. It's gonna take longer, but it'll be worth it in the end when it actually turns out the way it's intended. Something else I decided to do that wasn't exactly planned but fit the theme is I realized I had everything on hand to recreate ocean water, like the kind they sell at Sonic. The closest Sonic to us is like an hour away, but ocean water is always my favorite thing to drink there. So basically it's Sprite or 7up, I had Sprite Zero here, and they use simple syrup, which is just sugar water. I didn't wanna add sugar, obviously, since I'm already drinking the Zero version of the soda, but you can go ahead and do that to your liking. You add a little bit of coconut flavor, coconut extract, and then some blue dye. That's exactly the same formula they use at the actual Sonic restaurant. So yours is gonna taste just the same way at home. And this was so good. My son helped me drink it, of course. <laughs> he didn't wanna try it himself, but he's always willing to lend a hand to help me drink more efficiently. It was really, really yummy. So the Jello might not have been a 100% win, but at least we got our ocean water. Yeah, you ready? We're gonna put tape on the paper and you're gonna paint it with the orange paint. And then tomorrow when it dries, we're going to do something special with this.
All right, my friends, that's going to conclude our Finding Nemo Disney homeschool theme. My son absolutely loved watching this movie. We saw Finding Dory in theaters a while back whenever it came out. So I had a feeling he'd enjoy Finding Nemo. And on top of that, he's always really loved fish tanks, like looking at aquariums and things like that. So I suspected it would be a hit and I was right. And speaking of a hit, the art project was a lot of fun this time too. My son loves anything that allows him to cut and paste. It's like two of his favorite things. And the fact that he was able to paint this also was a lot of fun for him. And it just turned out so cute. Isn't that adorable? The food this time around though, the recipe if you will, that was a little bit of a flop. Turns out that the fast method of making jello for whatever reason didn't work for us, but that's okay. Part of learning is embracing failures. And now we know for next time, have patience and just do it the long way because it'll probably turn out better. In fact, if you decide to make our jellyfish jello and you do it the traditional way, I guess, let me know how it turns out for you because I'm curious. That could be a whole science experiment all on its own. Was it that the grapes for whatever reason did not allow the jello to set or was it the method that we used? Let's compare notes and learn from each other, shall we? In any case, we absolutely loved this theme and we're looking forward to more themes like it throughout the rest of the summer. So make sure that you subscribe and come on back. I'm putting out videos like this every two weeks or thereabouts. That's my goal anyway. And I believe there's already, if I'm not mistaken, between 18 and 20 of these themed videos in the Disney homeschool playlist. So if you're perhaps gearing up for next year's homeschool and you'd like some inspiration, make sure you check that playlist out. And as always, I'm going to be posting a link in the description box to the Pinterest board that pertains to the Finding Nemo theme. You're going to find all sorts of recipes and art projects and educational activities, some that we did in the video and some that we didn't get to. But anytime I find something new that's relevant, I always add it to the boards. That way they're always evolving, they're always fresh. So every time you check them out, there's gonna be new things to discover. And I try my best to make sure to include things for kiddos of all ages and all abilities. If you do any of these activities, I'd love to hear from you how they turned out. Let me know all about it in the comments. And lastly, I wanna thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, I hope you'll please give it a big thumbs up. I'd also love it if you'd subscribe and click that notification bell because I post at least three times a week and I wouldn't want you to miss a minute. Thanks so much again for watching. Bye.